colleague Martin is in Istanbul with a residency from Germany and um, I watched his performance, Our Analog Me, in this very building where he worked for the performance for many um, months. And now we are lucky enough to get a digital um, sneak peek to this performance or a new one that we will see. Thank you for, for joining me here. Welcome. <laughs> Welcome, <Sibyl. laughs> So, trying to describe what you do, I mean, you're an ethnomusicologist, you're a multi-percussionist, but um, you also say something, um, sound actionist. Could yeah. you tell me what that means? So, I was thinking that sound actionist, for example, I was thinking of how to describe it, explain what I do. It shows that, that, that I just don't do a concert or a performance and just show something that I've prepared. I, I try to work with the room, I try to work with the people whilst I'm performing and it's, a, it's an action and there's something going on. It changes me and hopefully the people who are there as well. So I found that terminology sound action is uh, more fitting. Let's speak about your performance uh, here. Yeah. It was called Our Analog Me. Yeah. And it was, um, you were playing with this idea, a room as an instrument. Could you expand on this idea a little bit? The room really becomes an instrument, like a musical instrument, or that the room is a musical instrument. My decision to make it an instrument, you know, usually I, we just see this floor or this wall as something that the architecture gives us and we behave to it in, in our normal normal life. But uh, I can choose to, to, to make musical things with, with this room, with the, with the walls, with the air in it, with the windows, with, yeah, with the floor, with the furniture in the room. You know, that all produces sounds and um, I can use it as a musical instrument. Yeah, that's my idea. So I don't bring other instruments. The room itself is, is the instrument. You didn't want any other uh, digital instruments in the room. So people had to leave the phones outside and that gave me a real feeling of timelessness actually. And what were you thinking about doing this? You know, to call the performance uh, our analog me came a lot because I was very impressed or shocked or whatever when I came to Turkey how digital everything is. So I find it's even more digital than Germany. It's like everybody has an Instagram account. Everybody. I didn't have an Instagram account when I came here, you know. I just I had a Facebook account or like it, several Facebook accounts, but I wasn't into, not that much into it, I find. And so it was overwhelming for me. So I wanted to create like an oasis, an analog oasis. It was really being in the moment and also very medita meditative for me. And it was really um, focusing on the sound. It could have been um, an improvisational concert of sorts for myself. Mm. 
it was you did it for three days in a row and for five hours. I was surprised that you didn't give a break, but then learned that you are actually doing longer performances. Um, why? I like to really dive into the moment. And I found out when I do longer performances or longer formats, let's say starting with four hours, four hours, five hours, six hours, 24 hours, I intended to do a 48 hour performance here. That was my initial idea that then we couldn't do it because of the lockdown and the coronavirus and the COVID situation. I, yeah, I like to, like to dive into it and I, I find stuff, it's like every performance is like a, I want to find something for out for myself. When I find something, when I, when I experiment, when I know something that I haven't known before, then I find it was a good performance. And I usually feel that it's for the other people as well. When I get into the searching mode and I get excited about, oh, I, I, I'm, I'm finding something right now, and I try to really get into it, then it usually is interesting for the people as well who are there with me. And, um, we find it together, actually. It's, uh, you know, we, we spoke about it, that uh, I could really feel your presence in the room as well, you know, and, and, and how, how that everybody behaves different. And then in this kind of performance, everybody, you know, shapes with the room and shapes the performance very much. So it's not just me. Yeah, it was a communication maybe with you as an audience and then with the yeah. room itself and the, yeah. what is created in there. And how did you uh, feel doing it in this building and in Istanbul? It has a lot of history. Uh, that's what I like. It's like the, the calligraphy of Emin Baden and uh, I, I feel close to what, you know, what was produced here in a way. I like that, you know, that there have always been German you know, there was always a contact to, to Germany between Emin Baden or the Baden Han and Germany. Also, I like that it is empty now. It's almost empty. You know, the room that we are in here right now, there, there is just stuff from him or his artworks, but other rooms or the other floors are almost empty and it's just such a nice feeling. It's just amazing to just be in a big empty room, but a room that had different purposes before. I feel it, I sense it, and it's full of creative energy, and it's what I love. I want to get to some bigger questions, as how I've seen that you've always shown interest in Turkish rhythm, and I want to talk about your take on it. Why were you drawn to it in the first place? I had a Turkish music teacher or professor at university, and so we were that was my initial start with uh, Turkish music, so I um, got really interested in it and I wrote my thesis about uh, Turkish music and um, yeah, and then later on I, I recorded an album with uh, Jacke Liebezeit, uh, a drummer from Germany and uh, so it was a, our concept was rooted in the Turkish rhythms as well and I what do I like? I, I think it's not just the rhythms, it's, it's, it's just, I, I like a lot of, of it's, it's dark and very, very emotional from my German point of view, let's say. It's, it has a different, it's, it's rooted differently than the G German folk or German traditional music and I, I like it. But somehow there are so many links as well. So many instruments that came into the big orchestras to Germany. So there are a lot of connections as well. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Hogai. <laughs> Thank you, Sudeth.